Hello, my name is Deacon Mac Hill from the Diocese of St. Augustine. In this brief reflection, I'd like to talk about the Mass, and particularly one uh, aspect of the Mass. And it's kind of this double gift that we have. So, in one sense, in every Mass, we're offering the Father this, this perfect sacrifice. You know, we're told throughout the Scriptures to offer a sacrifice of praise. We see all throughout the Old Testament, the Israelite people offering all different kinds of sacrifices for different things. There were sin offerings, there were thanksgiving offerings, there was the Passover sacrifice. All of these were human beings trying to offer to God some form of worship, some form of sacrifice. But they always ran into the problem, well, how can the blood of animals ever take away sins? How could we ever offer to God the sacrifice that He deserves? And we hear in the Psalms that God says, it is not the blood of bulls or or goats that I need. He says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. I do not need your sacrifices. And so what we have in Jesus is the fulfillment of every sacrifice, of every kind of worship that we could offer to God. And that's exactly what we do in every Mass, that we're brought back sacramentally to to the offering of Jesus on the cross. We're brought back to the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension of Christ into heaven. And we're able to offer to God this perfect worship, this perfect sacrifice, because we offer God back to God. So that's one aspect of this, of the gift. But then on the other side, it's a gift that we receive, even though we're offering to God His own self, His own sacrifice, we're receiving from the Father His own Son. And what a gift this is that God gives us the worship that we can offer back to Him. And through that, we receive God Himself. Now, we hear about this this whole theme throughout the letter to the Hebrews, but particularly in chapter 10. And I'm starting with verse 3. But in these sacrifices, meaning the sacrifices of the Old Covenant, there is a reminder of sin year after year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, He said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for Me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See, God, I have come to do Your will. A little bit later on, He abolishes the first the first sacrifices, in order to establish the second, the perfect sacrifice offered on the altar. For it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. A little bit later on again in verse 14. For by a single offering, Jesus has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any sacrifice, any offering for sin. It's the fact that Jesus has offered the perfect sacrifice once for all. Every time that we receive Him in the Eucharist, we're taking part in that one sacrifice once and for all of our Lord on the cross. And so, yes, we're offering the Lord, this gift, but it's actually a gift that He's already given us. And through that offering, we're receiving God Himself. And so two practical ways that we can enter more deeply into the Mass through this kind of double gift that we see in the Mass is that every time uh, the priests or the deacons are preparing the altar, That's a time for us to offer ourselves to the Father through Jesus. 
And we don't only offer our good things or thanksgiving for the good things, we can also offer our own sinfulness and the sinfulness of the world. As the priest is preparing the gifts on the altar, we can say, Father, I offer to you all the unbelief, all the division, all the lack of peace in our nation. I offer to you whatever particular sin that we're struggling with at that time. I offer that to you here on this altar. Because that's exactly what God is doing when the Son of God became flesh, is that He's taking not only our good things, but especially our sins upon Himself to sanctify them and bring them back to the Father. So that's one aspect. Another point of the Mass where we can enter more deeply into this double gift is after the Eucharistic prayer is finished, when the priest lifts up the consecrated uh, chalice and host, and he says, through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours now and forever. That's the moment when we're offering the Father the perfect sacrifice because we're offering him Jesus himself. We're offering God back to God. We can make our whole lives a continuation of that, of offering God. God has given himself to us. Now we're offering God back to God. And it's with that mystery, this great awe and wonder in mind that we say, Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. To whom else shall we go?